Turns out the people say that uh, imitation is apparently apparently the best form of flattery. Not sure what to think about that. The day after the Dark Horde episode one, um, wow, I've seen a couple of channels that uh, usually don't do things related to the paranormal, um, doing things on EVPs and ghost boxes. What an interesting topic it is. Not sure that I'm flattered. Not sure that I feel that the invitation is warranted. This is Manny Moonraker. This is episode number, I believe, 322. At the UFO Buster Radio News, we got three articles to talk about today, and uh, that's just the way it goes. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Dark Horde episode one. It really was a uh, kind of driving people towards what I favor when it comes to the paranormal. And I listen, I, I love ghost boxes. I just do not give two hoots for EVPs. I just, I don't know. Too much of trying to figure out what the heck it's being said. And um, it makes things more difficult, I think. I think the uh, ghost boxes are a lot better. And that really is how it's going to go down for the Dark Horde in the spring. That's how I'm going to do my research. By the way, some of you who are loyal listeners to UFO Buster Radio, you can hear the snoring in the background. That is Bugs, the UFO hunter, Boston Terrier with an attitude, who snores really fucking loud. I mean, jeez. And he means it, too. Have mercy. He really does. In between the farting and the snoring, the guy's unstoppable. So, one thing I did realize yesterday was that um, UFO Buster Radio Network is actually set up to have, uh, actually host different podcasts. So, the Dark Horde is actually under UFO Buster Radio Network, which means that if you uh, listen to UFO Buster Radio... On no matter what platform it is, you should also be able to hear the Dark Court on the same platform. It'll just be titled differently. And of course, it does have its own address, but it all rolls up to the network. So this might be a win-win because uh, you guys don't have to wait. Next week on the Dark Court, there's a story I came across a couple of days ago. Well, actually, there's two. One locally and one not so local. But geez louise, come on, people. I mean, I mean, folks are so morbid. It is these kind of places that uh, you have these morbid happenings that you want to go visit and do some kind of uh, investigation. And jeez, man, I just uh, we really we're going we're going to get into the dark side of things on the dark court starting next week. Uh, I, I do got to say this: it is uh, somewhat uncomfortable, if you will, talking about this topic because. Geez, today I just felt like someone was watching me all freaking day. Like always something, like in the dark, just standing behind me. It's been really freaky, and it's about to get worse. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I might only be able to do that podcast for like a year, you know, or six months for that matter, if I keep on being fucking paranoid. It's so freaking strange. That is one topic that really gets you at the core of who you are. Like, fuck aliens. Eh? You're going to get probed? Go ahead, get it done with. But um, spirits, ghosts, and demons? Jeez Louise, it is it's something else. Um, By the way, Green Man is in the chat box live. Uh, he says, what's up to Bugs and myself? Yep, Bugs. Uh, man, he's like, he's building something over there. And he says the uh, Dark Horde show was cool. You know, uh, I really had high hopes for it. But when I started going through and... Uh, downloading EVPs, and then downloading uh, Ghost Box or Spirit Box samples. The EVPs really were, they were lackluster. They were just um, just terrible. Today there was a momentous event. Get, uh, damn it, Bugs. 
And uh, I'm talking about SpaceX. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But uh, I also want to say uh, Conor McGregor is back. Those of you who have listened early on in the episodes for UFO Buster Radio, you know that I am a, a bit of a F, uh, UFC fan, and especially a Conor McGregor fan. 42nd KO, first round. Uh, wow. That's uh, making a statement that you're back. Crazy bananas. I'll have to keep an eye on that for uh, the Big Dime Sports Podcast, which will come back shortly. But uh, why don't we just get into this UFO news, alien news, SpaceX news, and again, military's talking about a Tic Tac again. What in the hell is going on? Can't they just, just let it be? Since I was working on a dark chord yesterday, uh, I don't have my uh, news jingle music, so I'm going to have to make something up here. Hold on a second. Come here! Jesus, Marge! What the fuck? Yeah, that is the news jingle for today for you guys. Just made it on the fly just because, uh, you know, things were still set up for the dark chord. And really, I didn't think I would be get on, getting on uh, Spreaker today to do a podcast. But uh, I feel like I had to let go of some of that darkness, that spiritual darkness that was hanging over me like a dark cloud. So now let's get into the probings of things. A former Navy admiral says UFO analysis is inconclusive. Now, what do you think he's talking about right now? Well, nothing other than 
the Tic Tac videos. Out of Sarasota, Florida, the former chief of naval operations said last Thursday that the uh, unidentified flying objects, which he, hey, that's faux pas on your part, buddy. The Navy said you should not be calling them that. They should be UAPs, aerial phenomena. Come on, get with it. God damn it. It turns out he says that um, they appear to have outperformed Navy fighters, pilots on videos recorded in 04 and 15, but they remain a mystery. There's a quote in here from retired Admiral Gary Roughhead. <laughs> Shouldn't he be in the Marines? Uh, I've seen the videos, and at least in my time, most of the assessments were inconclusive as to what it was. Yeah. But the whole issue of defense against autonomous vehicles is one that the department is taking pretty darn seriously. Now, the one thing about this article, and uh, let me just be uh, transparent, it actually came from military.com. It's not going to talk about UFOs or UAPs like they're coming from 4.2 far nowhere. It's not talking about something that went through a wormhole and ended up on the planet. There is an undertone to this article that says that these were man-made vehicles and that it's not E.T. The article continues to talk about the actual incidents with the, uh, the Nimitz and the Roosevelt and the fact that the F-18 Hornets were completely outmaneuvered. And it's good. It's good. It's a good article because it takes folks back. So anyone that just happened to fall off a, you know, off the Humpty Dumpty wall and just happened to knock their heads and fall across this situation with the uh, Tic Tac, the Nimitz and the Roosevelt, well, hey, you should have had a V8 because apparently you're not looking at the news. It's a weird thing how many people do not know about this incident, even though it was in a pretty much promoted and uh, talked about through all the national outlets when it comes to the news media. But yet people are completely clueless. They, <laughs> they have no idea. Just like the other day, we covered that story about the uh, gentleman who had no idea that the Starlink satellites were wreaking havoc around the world as people are reporting UFOs. And he referred to them as a string of Christmas lights in the sky. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, there's another quote from uh, the retired admiral here, Mr. Rubhead. He says, without knowing what we may be or what they may be, uh, are they phenomena? Are they vehicles that someone was able to get into place? I think one of the great challenges that more people looked at is where would have one come from? And quite frankly, I haven't spent a lot of time on the issue. The article is uh, also fascinating because he also takes time to point towards China and Russia. That is the, uh, I mean, that's the, the mindset of the military, right? You you take the, the big players when it comes to uh, our little blue planet. You got to look at the ones who have, who are the heavy hitters when it comes to, um, you know, having the military, uh, military power, superpower. And the answer will always lead them to a terrestrial source. And for us in the United States or any Western um, society, it will be the big bad ones, which will be China and Russia. Uh, so, yeah. So the weird thing is, is that you really don't see any concern. Now, they, he did say in here that, you know, they're uh, pretty much looking into this as being taken seriously. But other than that, uh, what the fuck does it mean to us? We're getting information secondhand from someone that was retired in the military. Where are the current people who are leading the military apparatus in the United States, in the UK, in any other country where UFO incidents are a norm, kind of, or something that people don't really give two fucks about? But, you know, again, I say, if you are living... You own it. Shit, if you own a fucking piece of property somewhere, you want to know what the fuck is going over your head, don't you? Doesn't it matter to you? Doesn't it matter that your kids could be in school and some UFO lands in the schoolyard and uh, visits them for a couple hours? Thanks, Bugs.
I think all that's important. And in, in many ways, it feels like they're taking a, uh, like I say, a nonchalant attitude towards it. Like it really doesn't matter, which always brings me back to the idea that the reason why that is, is because it is man-made. And, uh, you know, what can you do? Is that is that really where we're at right now? It's very strange. Very, very strange. There's a there's more to this article. The link is in the description, and you you got to do this. Go to that article because this particular admiral actually talks about an incident that he had personally with a UFO. Now, why in the flying fuck he keeps on uh, talking about it being a UFO and such? I don't know. It's really strange, but uh, shit happens, right? He's retired now, so he's out of the loop. And here's the other thing. Why are we hearing so much from retired people? We need to get the people who are in it now. This is the thing with UFOs and stories, is that we always get it third-hand and fourth-hand from people who are on their deathbed confessions or completely out of current information or current intel in the military to really help us at all. So we're still stuck at square one. Continuously getting probed and uh, not getting anywhere at all. That's why things are just, uh, it's just all coming to an end.
yeah, I got no news jingle, but what about maybe something like this? <laughs> Fatality. That's what happened today with SpaceX. I, you know what? I, I would hate, I would hate to ever be in any kind of competition uh, against Elon Musk. I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, it's impossible. It is literally impossible for you to win, Boeing. For you to win, anyone out there who is trying to do any kind of a of a uh, you know reusable orbiter or, or some shit like that, uh, you're pretty much you're you're like totally fucked. Fatality. I'm telling you, the guys at Boeing, they probably all passed out. You know that they were all watching the Crew Dragon test today. They were all sitting around, biting on their nails pulling on their pocket protectors, and then the fucking thing made it back to the planet Earth. Like, I'm sure some of them passed out, like they were at some kind of a concert, you know, just watching their favorite singer. It is completely ridiculous, all the success that they have. Even when SpaceX has, (laughs) even when they fuck up, right, and they blow up something, right, uh, a few months later, they come back. Big success. He is like a bull in a fucking china shop. And all these little crystals and fine china is made up of all these companies that are trying to get into space. Seriously, it is absolutely nuts. Uh, Greenman says that uh, Elon made a deal with the devil. He probably did. Holy shit. What is it? I mean, he'll probably live forever, too. Today, if you got the notification, if you're on YouTube, I've actually follow SpaceX on YouTube so that I get the notifs. And yeah, what a great sight to see. They blew up the fucking rocket, it got blown up, and then the crew dragon just corrects itself, shoots off the parachutes, and there you go. Saved. What a wonderful thing it would have been for NASA. To insist on having some kind of a fucking vehicle that did this before we had all the space shuttle accidents. What a novel fucking idea. When uh, the last uh, Starhopper test happened, you know, NASA was, of course, tweeting all this negative shit uh, on Twitter about, you know, hey, great job, SpaceX, now can you get back to work on our shit? This is one of the things that we're referring to, right? This test was holding up uh, the ability for SpaceX to send people up. Send astronauts up to the ISS. One of the chief complaints was that uh, the dummies at NASA are spending millions of dollars that they're giving to the Russians. And of course they say, well, you know, it's because we're waiting on someone to be able to take astronauts up. Blah, 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 blah. And there goes Elon, right? I'm going to show you uh, what's really going on. You need to step back. Get your pencil protectors from Tesla, because I'm about to electrify you, bitches. Come here! And he did it. He totally did it. It was so freaking exciting. Uh, There is an article that's linked in the description right now that you guys can take a look at. If you have not seen the amazing video, it doesn't take that long. Basically... You know, out of Cape Canaveral, Florida, uh, they took this uh, Crew Dragon, they sent it up, they blew up the rocket, the Crew uh, Crew Dragon separated itself from a rocket, came back down, everything is hunky-dory. If there were people in there, they'd be alive today. It is fantastic. This is great. As many of you witnessed firsthand on the news of those several space shuttle accidents, it is a terrible thing to watch. It is horrific, especially for those that have so much pride in a program like that. And it doesn't matter what country you're in either. You could be in Russia, and you could see some Sputnik shit going up, or some, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is. In India, I'm sure in India they have plenty of pride when their stuff goes up. Unfortunately, they get saddened because <laughs> it tends to crash. But still, you have all this pride, right? 
that brings pride. And it really is something phenomenal to watch. So look at the description. There is a uh, a video attached to that to that news article. Check it out. It's pretty cool. You don't even have to be a fan of uh, SpaceX or Elon Musk or Tesla or any fucking company, really, that's doing this. Just be amazed because these are the steps. These are the small steps that are going to take us a little further than where we are today, than where we were a few years ago. <clears throat> this is it right here.
That's right. That is the call of the wild from Elon Musk. I bet you his kids walk around. I don't even know if he fucking has kids. But if he did, that's how they cry. They wouldn't really cry like regular babies. They'd be uh, yelling for shit. Get your ass over here and give me some food. The next article has to do with uh, alien life and our inability to fucking find it. It is weird doing <laughs> it. really is weird doing these articles where they're saying E.T. doesn't exist. And then we have people who are saying, I got probed. I got probed last week. Yeah, uh, there is, I don't know, there's such a disconnect with this. It's uh, it's phenomenal. I think maybe that's what's pushing me over to the paranormal. <laughs> I just, um, God, I don't know. The article is uh, titled, Could Invisible Aliens Really Exist Among Us? An Astrobiologist Explains. So the whole idea, the concept behind this article is basically, you know, recently we had uh, Helen Sharman, don't squeeze her, a Britain's first astronaut and a chemist at uh, Imperial College of London. And she said, oh, shit, uh, good day, mates. Well, I guess that's Australian. I can't even say good day, right? Because that's wrong, too. God, oh, fuck. Uh, basically, she said, listen, alien life is everywhere. Everywhere. Pull yourself up by the uh, good old big girl panties because there is alien life places you don't even know. This was an article that uh, actually came out last week when she <laughs> she made this, this announcement that uh, you should just stop fucking around and start believing because she's ready to go up somewhere. She says, alien life exists. There are no two ways about it. Furthermore, she wonders, will they be like me and you? Maybe made up of carbon and nitrogen? Question mark. Maybe not. It's possible they are right here, right now. We can't sleep, simply uh, see them. So this article goes on that that tangent right there. They basically feed off of what she said and uh, went into this whole situation about how could it be that we cannot even recognize alien life right here on our own planet. Much less anywhere else, right? Because, uh, fuck, we can't find it anywhere. Plain and simple. Uh, one thing she says, uh, this particular writer says, it is possible that life could exist in what they call a shadow biosphere. And then, and then she, she clears up, it's not a ghost realm. I was like, oh, fuck, I got to invite her to the Dark Horde. No, she's not saying a uh, ghost realm or your anti-dimensional beings that have, like, cat women, Ronnie Dawson, not even any of those. No. It's more possibly that their biochemistry is completely different. It's not carbon-based. It's not some sorry-ass fucker who's sucking up oxygen. It could be completely and totally different. And so because, as we've said before, Many times on the podcast, because it's not what we're used to, it's not what we're used to researching, we miss it. Thanks, Bugs. It's like it doesn't even really um, exist. So we'll never find aliens if they do not follow our chemical makeup, our biology, because we don't fucking care. We're not open-minded enough to even look at it. Uh, One of the things that um, the article notes is that, uh, by popular suggestion, the idea of an alternative biochemistry is uh, one that is based on silicon rather than carbon. So that would throw you off. If you're looking for alien life that's based on carbon and there's silicon, well, you're looking for all the wrong things. Uh, Think about it, because we think, about things that, uh, you know, they eat, they pee, they shit, they sweat, they sleep, they survive, you know. But we don't, um, we wouldn't think there's something that's inanimate to be living. So we ignore it because we figure that something that's made out of, uh, let's say, wood, it's never going to do anything. It's never going to, like, take a dump. Like, you're not going to go into work and see a little ball of shit sitting next to your desk, and you're think, oh, fucking desk did it again. No, you're going to look at some of your coworkers and see which one of those fuckers did it. Punch them right in the noggin. So that's what she's saying. 
you know, because and it, and it boy, boy, wait, wait, in that example, maybe that desk is made of silicon and it did take a shit to you. And because you don't think that uh, silicon can live, you're like, oh, fuck it. It was one of my coworkers, uh, bastards. So that's what uh, the the uh, author of the article is saying. We, because we don't recognize it as something that could be uh, alive, that could be living, that things that are silicon-based may be missed entirely. And they might be giving out signs of life, but we don't give a flying fuck about it, uh, to be honest. Uh, one of the things that the article points out to is that uh, there is an argument that silicon life uh, can actually... Um, be on Earth, but not only that, it um, it things could be adaptable to work with silicon life. And there was an experiment at Caltech which actually showed that specifically. Yeah, so Caltech managed to breed a bacterial protein that created bonds with silicon. Essentially, what they did was that they brought the silicon to life. This is what the author is saying. It is very possible that without experimentation, it is very possible that this could be naturally occurring somewhere. Whether it, if, would it be in our own solar system on one of our other planets, let's say like the, the moons of Saturn or, um, or Titan, on the moon Titan, or any other planet in our solar system, this could be happening especially on those planets where you don't have a whole lot of carbon, right? There is traces of carbon or whatever, but there could be other chemicals where life could be bonding to and create a different base for that life form. But because we're looking strictly for carbon, oxygen, and uh, like on Mars, the gases, the flatulence that happens in cycles... We don't recognize anything else. Bug is really getting into it right now. I mean, geez, Louise, Bug. This is so embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. So that is uh, an argument there. And it's a good argument. Because if, if you're looking at life from, let's say, I don't know, 4, 40, 30, 60 light years away, it is very possible that that life form could exist in a different bio makeup. But here's something that um, was really fascinating. And we've seen this actually in the last few weeks. There are articles which have um, continued to talk about the fact that there are meteors that have crashed within our own solar system, within our own planet, that show signs that they could have been an example of how life was seeded on our planet. That these particular asteroids carried what could be carbon-based molecules that did not originate from our own Earth or our own solar system. They could have come from somewhere else. Which makes you think, why is science so locked up? in a this non-believing attitude when they're telling us that the uh, building blocks of our carbon-based life came from somewhere else. Wouldn't you think that the fucking area they came from has humans just like us, or a variation thereof? Yeah, Greenman says, <laughs> damn... That was loud, Bugs. Uh, no, he really is. He's. This is why I kick him out of this little studio area all the time, because he's just uh, he's just too much, too much. I, I mean, really, he sounds like a human being. Check out the article in the description. Give it a visit. Give it a read. And listen, it is truth, complete truth. Just because it's not like us, and we've seen this in history in many different ways, <laughs> we've seen this. When it comes to people, when it comes to animals, when it comes to discoveries, I mean, fuck, how many, how long have we been researching in the oceans and we're just now discovering species A or B? It's the same fucking story, just told in a, a different platform, in a different scenario. We gotta get it together, folks. We do.
Dodge. What the fuck? This is uh, the end of the podcast, basically. I just want to do uh, one reminder. It is Tinfoil Hat Contest number two. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, even the really old wrinkled ones. Don't forget, the middle of February, it's all over. Get your tinfoil hat in. I saved you guys. I did, because I said, hey, they don't even have to put it on. They can put it on an unsuspecting neighbor. And, you know, if a cop's walking by, put it on their head. I don't know. You might get shot, but uh, make sure you take the picture and send it in. You can send in your tinfoil hats to UFOBusterRadio at gmail.com. And, um... Just remember, you have to also supply either an email or an address in order to receive the uh, Amazon gift card. And, you know, depending on how many entries you get, there might be more than one prize to be given. But at this rate, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Tony out in Germany. I just saw your response. Uh, You're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. But the weird thing is that I I started looking, you know, this uh, Tony, he sends me messages through YouTube. And I was looking through this, and then I came across this ad for uh, Manscaped 2.0. And then under under the ad, it says, We Save Balls. I'm going to let you guys think about that just for a moment. Uh, Apparently, it's a good tool, something we all (laughs) should have. Uh, To avoid entanglements, I guess. This is episode number 322, I believe. Not really sure. I've forgotten by now. You have a bunch of radio news. Don't forget to listen to Dark Horde next Saturday. I don't have a time, no, because that's the way I roll. Like free ball. Probably why I need to manscape. Thank you guys for listening. Ciao.